Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Continuing on where we left off, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and bless you, forgive us and forgive you, and guide us and guide you. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We were talking about the ayat of Allah Azza wa Jal. We mentioned the ayat kawniya and the ayat shari'iya. The ayat kawniya meaning those signs in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sea is beautiful. Uh, the intricacies of our bodies are beautiful. The details of the fly. These are beautiful creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are beautiful and have so much to offer. And then we have the signs in the Shari'iya, meaning the ayat Shari'iya, meaning like the ayat of the Quran versus the Quran. And then we mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَشِبُ لِي شَمْسُ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرُ وَشِرُوا لِلَّهِ عَلَى ذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ uh, among the signs of the night and the day and the sun and the moon, worship not the sun and the moon, but worship Allah who created them if it is Him you truly worship. Ibn Kathir said, the creator of these objects is the one worthy of worship. He said, al The creator of those things, of these objects, meaning the sun and the moon, is the one truly worthy of worship because SubhanAllah, there's so many people who even claim that they're gods. You would be amazed. In America, we have a group, they're called the 5% uh, Nation. And they say that they are gods. And they say that women, uh, they sp speak about black people only. They say black men are gods and black women are earths. So then when they see one another, they say, what's up, God? That's how they greet each other. They actually believe, and I don't think they really, really believe that, but they're on so much shirk, they're so deceived, they know they can't create a fly, and I've talked to some of them. I said, you can't even create a fly. How can you say that you are al-khalik? But they, they say, I say, you can't even, if you, you can say to these people, you cannot, at Karamakum Allah, even create your own bowel movement. When you're sick, and you have to go to the bathroom tremendously, you cannot stop that. If it is really sick in your stomach, you will have to relieve yourself. That shows they can't even create that. They can't stop the time of death or delay their death. Even if they have cancer and they have cancer treatments, they can't stop it. All that is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a God... The creator of the heavens and earth has the power to do all that. Huwa al hayyul qayyum. You hear what you meet. He gives life and he gives death. That is a law. Who mustahik lili badah? Those people are not worthy of worship. They don't, they can't do anything. They can't even control their bowel movement. They can't even stop their own death. But they're still on ignorance. This is, people believe this. Some people actually have some belief in this. Some other people that say La ilaha illallah even, they believe that their sheikh can give life and give death. You have some people like this in Hadramot. You all lived in Hadramot. Some of those masajid that were around you, not many, but some of them, they even one or two of them had graves in them. There was a big masjid right across the street by the beach, right across the street from the, the masjid, the biggest masjid that was close by, across the street, if you can remember. And that masjid, I believe it was that masjid, had a grave in it. And they believed, all the students at Dar Hadith in Sher were mubtidiyah, you know, innovators and stuff, because they didn't give respect to the dead Sufi sheikhs. Because some of the people actually believe that their sheikh knows the unseen. Their sheikh doesn't have to pray anymore if he's alive. Their sheikh can do this and their sheikh can do that. So they give characteristics of Allah to their sheikh. They give their sheikhs a type of rububiyah. 
And then it progresses to uluhiyya, meaning that they begin to worship and pray to their sheikh. Their sheikh is dead. They pray to their sheikh. If you ask them where their sheikh is, oh, he's making hajj now, and it's not even the time for hajj. His sheikh is in Hadramot. His sheikh is in America, but he made hajj last night outside the time of hajj without flying to Mecca because he is so close to Mecca and so close to Allah. This is what they believe. Some of them believe their sheikh is Allah. Min kufr then the sheikh said, getting back to the text, he said, the kinds of worship, he said, the kinds of worship that Allah commanded us with are such as Islam, faith, ihsan, meaning perfect faith, and others such as supplication, fear, request, meaning to ask for something from Allah, trust, to tawakkal in Allah, love, reverence, humbleness, looking with apprehension to the omnis omniscience, repentance, resort, and recourse to Him, calling for help, offering sacrifices to Him, and all the other kinds of commandments that, the, that Allah has instructed us with. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, when al masajid lillahi fala tab'u ma Allahi ahada and the places of worship are for Allah alone so invoke not anyone along with Allah letting us know that there are different kinds of worship there is love there's different kind of love there's a love you have for your parents your love you have for your your family but there's the love that only goes to Allah there's a special love that you don't give to your parents or anyone that is the love when you cry in the depths of the night to Allah because Allah can see you Allah doesn't die. Allah can give you. Allah can take from you. Allah is the creator of the heavens and earth. And Allah is the most merciful. That love, that love which goes to the level of worship is only to Allah, not to anyone else. And there's trust, tawakkul. You might trust me. You trust your mom. You trust your grandparents. You trust your friends. You have trust. But tawakkul is i'timad Allah wa fi'l asbab. When you have true tawakkul, that is a type of ibadah, a type of worship to Allah alone. That means you you put your trust in Allah. That means you tawakkul Allah. It means you put all of your trust, all of your affairs with Allah after doing actions to make that happen. For example, if you say, I want a good job, or I want to get I want to go to the university. I want to get good grades to go to the university. That means that you strive. You make your application for the university. You try to get good grades so you can get accepted in the university. Maybe you do a job so you can pay for your university studies. Okay? And then you put your trust totally in the law. You made effort, but you put your trust totally in the law for the results. That's to welcome. That is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not with human beings. So that is to the level of worship. Likewise, there's many other types of, of, uh, of ibadah. So here the shaykh is just talking about the different kinds of ibadah, and he's going to go into details about that, and that all of this ibadah goes to Allah. And anyone who violates this ibadah, that's shirk. So if you give tawakkul, true tawakkul, that is to the level of ibadah, to other than Allah, that's shirk. If you have love, the ibadah love, to anyone other than Allah, then that's shirk. That means you've taken it to the level of ibadah. You're crying in humility and making sujood and so forth, having your heart totally with something in creation. No. You have your love for your family, you have your love for your friends, and your love for your community, and things like this, and love for the believers, but not to the level of worship. That true, in-depth, spiritual love is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So then the shaykh said, so whoever directs a worship, an act of worship, to other than Allah, is a polytheist and an infidel, means they're a disbeliever. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, He gave the evidence, He said, <laughs> 
If anyone invokes besides Allah, meaning they supplicate to other than Allah, they make dua to other than Allah, any other God, he has no authority therefore, and his reckoning will be only with his God, meaning it, and verily the unbelievers will fail to win through, meaning that if you worship other than Allah, you direct ibadah to other than Allah, you'll be the loser. You'll be the one who loses. It doesn't hurt Allah. But Allah hates that you commit shirk. And Allah loves that you practice Tawheed, that you worship Him. He loves this. And He's happy. And if you want success in this life as well as the hereafter, you'll worship Allah and not worship His creation. You won't supplicate to the creation. You won't make sujood to the creation. You won't pray to the creation. You won't make hajj for the creation. You won't make umrah for the creation. You won't do all those acts having the tawakkul wa tawassul wa ragaba wa rahaba to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That true hope, that true fear, that true humility, that work goes to the level of ibad, uh, ibadah, that's only to Allah, not to the creation. And that's the point here, that the person who does ibadah to other than Allah, they have fallen into disbelief. They've fallen into shirk. وَعِيَادًا بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And we'll leave off there, and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. وَصَلَّى على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم